Hi, in this video, I'd like to take a look at InTouch version 2020 and some of the changes that we've received. The first thing you're gonna see is that the start menu has changed. No longer are things grouped under the Wonderware folder. Instead, they've moved in under a folder called Aviva InTouch HMI. But let's go ahead and start up InTouch Application Manager and see what's changed. So right now you can see what looks very similar to our application manager screens we've seen in the past, but this is actually not the default view. When you first install 2020, we're actually gonna see a different view that makes it a little easier for us to select which application we want. So I'm gonna click on the list view and we're gonna see some thumbnails of the different applications that we've created. We'll see three applications here, the first two our demo applications. You're probably familiar with the Reactor demo that's come pre-installed for a number of years. The second one in the list is an example application that uses some of the newer graphics. The third one is a new application that I've created, but you'll notice there's no picture associated with it. Whenever we create an application, we can choose which picture to associate with it, and I've not done that as yet. Now, one of the nice things that comes with 2020 is the ability for us to use what was previously called Orchestra Graphics. So a slight name change, those are now called Industrial Graphics. But in the past, we'd have to use what were called Modern Applications to get access to those graphics. But Wonderware has made it easier for us. Our standalone applications have the option to use the graphics right off the bat. Now, once InTouch Window Maker starts up, the environment's gonna look very familiar to what we've seen before, except that on the right-hand side, we're gonna see a new area for our industrial graphics. Remember, this is what used to be called orchestra graphics. So if I expand out this window a little bit, we'll see the graphics library and all the graphics that are in it. To use them, I'm gonna create a new window and I can just drag and drop those new graphics onto my screen. Another nice change that I've noticed with 2020 is that in the past, if you were trying to work on an application that was developed in a different resolution than what you're currently using, you'd run into problems where your graphics would get automatically converted. This is no longer the case. Here, you'll notice I'm trying to look at an application that is done in 1280 by 1024 resolution, not what I'm currently using. But when I open up the application, it's gonna ask me, do you want to convert the graphics? I can click no on here, and it's gonna still open up the application for me. The next change that I want to show you is the ability for us to change our classic windows to use our industrial graphics. In the past, with the 2014 R2 version, we could right click on any of our windows and there was an option to convert them. We still have that option here in this version, but to make it a little easier for you, off of the file menu, we have the option to convert all of the windows at once. Once this is done, we still retain our original windows in case there was a problem, but we'll notice our new windows are included but they have a slightly different icon. At the bottom right, we'll also see a properties panel. The reason is, these are not what are called windows in InTouch, and instead, they're what are called frames. So what is the difference? A frame can show one large orchestra graphic, whereas a window can be made up of multiple small graphics. A frame is also able to be zoomed in on at runtime. This is especially useful if you're using a multi-touch monitor and you want to do a pinch and zoom. So why is converting our classic windows into industrial graphics or frames important? Well, we have an option now called InTouch Web. This is the ability for us to see our application in runtime through a web browser. 
but this feature only works when we're using industrial graphics. So instead of having to rebuild all of your windows from scratch, we can convert all of our windows automatically and still make use of the web client. So once they've been converted, I need to do a couple steps. The first is to set up the root directory and the home screen. And lastly, if I've not done it before, I do have to go to runtime in Window Viewer at least once. Once that's done, I can click on the web client option and we'll be able to see my in-touch screens here shown inside of a web browser. From the menu, I can navigate to the individual windows if I wanted to, or use the buttons that are built into my screen to navigate that way as well. You'll notice in the menu bar, it does have an R slash O indicating that I'm in read only mode. But with the 2020 version, we also have the ability to do read write through a web browser, but this does require additional licensing. The last feature I want to show you is the ability for us to store our historical data, not only to InTouch's LGH files, but also now to the Wonderware historian. Now, obviously we could do this in the past, but you'd have to go to the historian and do the configuration through the historian's management console. But now by going into the special menu, configure historical logging, we have the option to directly set up logging to our historian. And all we have to do is enter in the name of the historian and a location on the hard drive where we can buffer data if the historian's not available, and InTouch will automatically send the data to our historian for us without us having to do any additional configuration. And that store forward location allows us to buffer data locally on the computer so that if we lose connection to the historian, all the data still gets saved locally. Once the connection is reestablished, InTouch will forward that data to the historian so that we don't lose data in the event of a network loss. Now this doesn't cover every feature available with the 2020 version, but I hope it gives you a taste of what's possible. My name is Dylan Pereira, and if you have any questions on this, please get in touch with us here at InSource Solutions. We would love to hear from you.